Greetings, Earthlings. <laughs> yes. Okay. One of my favorites. A from good Disney. start. Can you cut to my camera, please? Spin that, that wheel. wheel. Yo! Whoa! Welcome back, man. Hello, welcome back, man. <laughs> Guys, welcome back to the Collector Showcase, where we talk about everything in the collectible world, primarily the trading card world, yeah. and we help you guys figure out what you should buy, sell, and stay away from. Uh, today's show is all about Japanese Pokemon cards. cards. Where it all began. Where it all began, and it really is an incredible story, and I know we're in the middle of this like Pokemon craze, but it did not start last year. It did not. It actually didn't even start 10 years ago or 20 years ago. This thing actually goes way, 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 way back into to the 80s. Um, and it's a really, really cool story. But today we're going to be talking about uh, Japanese Pokemon cards. We're going to be opening up some Japanese Pokemon cards to learn a little bit more, um, not just the history, but also... Um, what we should be collecting, right. you know, what are these target packs that we should be going after? What should we buy hold seal maybe keep sealed or open up with what, what are these chase cards? You know, there's two different markets and you're loaded with some really great information You guys um, are gonna become experts right. Not just in Pokemon but Japanese Pokemon cards because I don't think that you could really appreciate respect and collect the English versions without actually having at least a background sort of story and understanding of the Japanese card world because all of the sets are released there first. Yes. Right? True. And the show, everything. The like, games, the show, right. everything. Like, it's not released at the same time. Mm -hmm. It's literally released there first. That's the homeland of Pokemon. It, it really is. So, in, in order for us to really understand what to collect and what to invest in, we need to understand the Japanese Pokemon market. Period. End of story. And that's really what it boils down to as far as this today's show, today's episode of, of why we decided let's really talk about the Japanese Pokemon world because this really gives us great insight into uh, you know what we should be going after here uh, in, the, in the English sort of Pokemon market. Indubitably. Um, yeah. <laughs> but um, Pokemon starts with one person and then shortly after just one other person even though it's a multi-billion dollar industry there are tens of thousands of people behind pokemon now it really started with these these two individuals who are these two individuals right <laughs> well and we yeah we and we can't we can't really t talk about the cards until we really talk about these individuals and it's right here hello. whoa hello Welcome to the satoshi show. how are you Welcome doing to the satoshi? showcase yeah i mean it was so hard to, to get you on on board and i appreciate Sato uh, uh, satoshi you agreeing your people agreeing so oh. yes well actually <laughs> so anyway th that's satoshi ta tahiri i think it is tahiri yeah. Um, and so this is really the brains behind it. And it started way back, I think it was like 1980, 1981. He was a teenager at the time. Parents wanted him to pursue like an electrical engineering like career. And he was not really hearing it at all. And like a lot of kids back in the early 80s, I remember this being an 80s kid, is we spent a lot of time in the arcade. Right. Arcades were really popular. I know they're not even like really around anymore, but arcades were huge back especially in the early 80s when when he uh, you know was started out and became obsessed with arcades and I even read once a story about Satoshi Tahiri that he spent so much time in this one arcade the arcade owner gave him an actual arcade to take home really? <laughs> yeah not even kidding uh, which is which is wild so early on his parents were not happy about this but obviously I think they're pretty proud now that's, that's how it goes with any <laughs> any kid who kind of veers off their parents vision if they make money the parents are happy in the end well yeah <laughs> I, I, I guess so 
But Satoshi, um, then with his obsession, he really, he took his passion, obsession, focused it and created a, uh, a magazine dedicated to talking about gaming, but specifically Easter eggers and like hidden codes and because they even existed right. back then and revealing all these things because there wasn't no, the, the internet really didn't exist in a, the form that we know today. There weren't a lot of publications dedicated to this. Right, so right. people needed resources in order to be able to advance in games and get the secret lowdown. And guess what the name of the magazine was called? Game Freak. What? Which we all know. What is what is Game Freak? Game Freak is the company that made the Pokemon game. Right. So we think of it as the production company, mm -hmm. the designing company. Game Freak was actually originally the magazine that he would like hand write. Um, wasn't even printed at first. He, was right. like, he would hand write these things. Wow. And at, at its like at hand its hand write every single one, or he yeah, would photocopy. Bro, he would hand write it and then photocopy. Oh, okay, it. I was gonna say. Right. <laughs> so he would hand write and then just photocopy. Because listen, he's a kid, right? He's right. a teenager. I think he was like 16 when he started it. But he did it for like six or seven years, and I think it's like at its heyday had like 10,000 subscribers. So that by its by itself, success. Right. And what the probably the the most important sort of relationship that came out of this out of all of pokemon was when satoshi which let's take him off the screen here meets this gentleman right here welcome you to know the this show. guy welcome welcome to the show ken, ken yeah, again actually, just yeah. just like uh, uh satoshi appreciate you answering the call uh, you're ken the guest Sugimori. of honor here yes. uh but appreciate you coming out thank you very uh, much, but sir. who is ken uh, ken Help sumori i believe is the uh the art director yeah. At the Pokemon company. Yeah. We are currently emailing him uh, on behalf of Chattanooga to get a, <laughs> for him to get a job. Yeah. So, <laughs> but, but Ken um, was, you know, is and was. Yeah, he's still uh, the currently, yeah. He's, he's the, still involved. The direct, I, think, I believe he's the director. He's the director now. But yeah. he was the first illustrator. And the, the story that I read was that Ken saw the publication on our newsstand, the Game Freak, you know, publication, that back then it was literally just like, articles mm -hmm. and tutorials right. and pulled it off the shelf and he was like this is awesome and approached satoshi about being the illustrator and be like let me illustrate this thing so he first illustrated this gaming magazine game freak and it wasn't then until years later they because they, they maintain their relationship right. obviously now ken creates the very first pokemon illustrates it rather and the rest is history right so the, this meeting between ken and satoshi is huge right because you can then argue, without this early meeting, you don't have Pokemon. I think there's a fair argument. Right? So th this the meeting between these two guys is really, really important. This is why we wanted to start the show talking about them. Uh, because th these these are the two people, the brains behind Pokemon. They should make a movie, When Ken Met Satoshi. <laughs> <laughs> they, they should make a, a movie about that. Um, anyway, I, I see a lot of you guys are tuning into the live show. I know a lot of you guys like to watch it on the replay. Amazing. But for those of you that are watching live, what Welcome. is up, Nick? What is up? Hey, it's Jay. Thank you so much for, for checking us out here. Um, but yeah, so these two guys are super important. And Ken um, really sort of revolutionizes illustration for Pokemon and many other series, right? And so Pokemon, the way that we know it, doesn't come out or as far as the game is concerned early 90s late right? 90s I would say yeah late early, 90s early 90s the games well they started developing it in the early 90s right but release wise release, no, none of us knew about it release until, mid to late right yeah. absolutely absolutely especially in the states yeah and so the way it goes is that so Satoshi has this idea because he observes two kids playing Game Boy do you remember the game link like the link cord you can link two Game Boys and play yep Right, so he observes. I used to, I used to trade Pokemon that way. Did you really? With my buddy Nick. All right, so you have two people, these two kids, and this, this, this is again, this is the story that they tell. I mean, they're still alive, so they can they can tell it themselves. Um, but he observes two kids playing Game Boy, and with that link cable, and he had when he was a kid himself had this collection, like a lot, of, a lot of, they have a bug collection, but he had this like obsession with bugs. And when he saw it, what he literally saw as a visionary and as a creative person, he saw these bugs traveling between Game through Boy and cable, Game Boy through right. the cable. And in that moment, he came up with the idea of, it wasn't called Pokemon, it was called Pocket Monsters. Monsters. Which is what it is called in Japan still. Right, and Pokemon is just short for Pocket Monsters. Yeah, yeah. And he took this idea, and this is now, by the way, it's not like he was just nobody with his little uh, magazine, and he just approaches Nintendo, and they give him a, a meeting. Uh, when he 
gets this meeting with Nintendo, he's already successful. Right. Right. He's coming from he has got Game Freak. He from Game Freak they parlayed that into actually designing some you know, some primitive games. Mm -hmm. So they were already in the gaming world for for several years before Pokemon was was pitched. So that's why they were able to get into the door of, of Nintendo. But Nintendo only said yes because they had already had some success. They literally told him they were like, we don't get it. Right. But since you've done some good work, we'll trust you. However, we're going to assign someone pretty special. And uh, it was the guy, what, what was his name? I forget his name now. What was the guy who helped... Who created Mario? Mario, yeah. Uh, with an M, with an M. Uh, let's see here. Let me just pull this up. Shigeru Miyamoto. Yes. All right, so this is the creator of Mario. Like, crazy success. Mm -hmm. And they were like, we're going to assign this guy to you. You guys are going to work together to create Pokemon. So they give him some seed money. A few years later, and then boom, we've got ourselves a Pokemon game. What's interesting, and this is an, a little known fact that a lot of people don't know, you know, what was the first Pokemon ever created? You know? Hmm. What do you think a lot of people would say? People would probably say Pikachu. Pikachu, like right? Like Mickey Mouse. Well, yeah. right, exactly. Yeah, that's the first one. Pikachu didn't come until a little bit later on. And the first Pokemon, actually, that was ever created uh, was right here. And who's who's this guy? That looks like a Rhydon. That's right. And um, the early illustrations of all Pokemon, even though the story is that they were supposed to be about bugs, mm -hmm. were actually all of them resemble, resembled dinosaurs. Right. All of them. Charizard. Uh, Lu was it Lugia? Lugia. Lugia. Like all of these things, they all resembled dinosaurs. That was the original illustrations, which is why we got this guy here. And if you go to like to the, especially the early games and even now, the games of Pokemon, and you see them walking through the wor wor worlds, and you see like statues of that Pokemon. Mm -hmm. It's actually an ode to that. That's it's right. intentional. It's like you know you're the first Pokemon, so we're gonna put you in statues in all these video games, which I think is kind of cool. If nothing, you think about look it. at that. Look at that original art. Nothing beats the original Pokemon art. Right. Truly. Oh yeah, abs That's absolutely. Some of the best stuff. I I, agree. I would love to get my hands on this stuff. You can't though. This this stuff is multiple seven figures, and it's like you can't even touch it. Yeah. Um, and they're like in museums. It's all it's crazy stuff, but it's a really cool story. Like I love learning the history of things, mm -hmm. especially like we got Pokemon. It's a multi billion dollar industry right now. There's the Pokemon craze. Like, how did it start? And to think something as big as it is now, all started because a six year old like would just love the arcade. And started a magazine himself. Right. It, like that's how it started. Yeah. I love stories. Like I know that. everyone tends to look at like companies like a, like a Disney, like a Pokemon. You look at these yeah. big things. You're like, oh, it just you know, it's just been like that. You don't realize that like it's just a regular person right. Right. who had basically nothing. Yeah, no name. Right. And it's it's a process. It took a long time. This, this yeah. doesn't happen overnight where you just get the success. No, it's it's so true. anyone out there who's got a good idea. Right. Keep at it. Keep trucking. Like, you know, keep the dream alive. And here's a case where the parents said, like, no, you're going to become an electrical engineer. And he was like, no, I like video games. Right. And But the thing is, like, he made something of it. Like, right. he clearly worked very hard. Smart decisions, partnering with the right people. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, it's incredible, the story. And from 1981 to today, you know, it's, it's just very, very cool. So, anyway, that's sort of a little bit of the history. This is, We're leaving a lot out. But, yeah. like, that's the, that's the gist of the history that brings us to where we are today. And the, the big question is... Are Japanese Pokemon cards valuable? Are they more or less valuable than the English cards? What should you collect and why? And so we're going to go through that today. And we've got a bunch of stuff. And I'm going to let you sort of take over from here. And just like let everyone know like what are we going to be opening? How many packs are we going to be opening and, and, and whatnot? <laughs> He's got a recount. We have, we have eight packs. And these are kind of miscellaneous packs uh, from a bunch of different sets. They are so in uh, the Japanese sets, they are named differently mm -hmm. than the English sets. Yeah. And sometimes two sets from Japanese equals one set in English. So there's a lot of translating that goes through. Mm -hmm. The Japanese cards, I've always said, are nicer cards, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, the coloring is a little different. They're sturdier, which is good for grading. They don't scuff as easily they don't crease as easily so it's oh my camera it's very good for uh for grading value wise aside from a few first off pikachu illustrator i believe is the most valuable card that is a japanese card there was never an english version made uh for the most part the english cards are more valuable than the japanese cards yeah 
uh, aside from a few, like I said, that Pikachu Illustrator card. Yeah. But the Japanese cards, in my opinion, are just better cards. Yeah. There's less in a pack, though. Uh, so you need to, you know, get mm -hmm. more packs. They're mm -hmm. also probably cheaper though to get. It's true. But um And they've actually since changed that with a few of the of the set releases a little right. bit later it's on. It's like but all different though. It's not really it, consistent it in the release. Right, like, like the, the, way like the packs of like four or five cards yeah. for the most part. Yeah. You know, it, it is completely different. Yeah, but we'll be breaking down what we have here. Uh yeah, so like first we'll just let's just dive right in. All right. Um and I I guess let's let's talk about a little bit uh the first pack that we're going to be opening up. Um and we've got as as Craig was saying, we got eight packs that we're going to be mm -hmm. sort of diving into here. Um and just to reveal what what cards are inside, we're going to talk about um, the value of the packs. We're going to talk about what the chase cards are for the sets, the value of those of those mm -hmm. chase cards, and, and a few other things as well. So some really important information. But the idea is we want to learn. Um, you know, we just outlined why it's important to learn, right? So right. now now that we now we understand it's why, we have to understand the what. So what is important about this that can help us? What can we pull from opening up Japanese and learning from Japanese packs that would help us understand maybe what is and what could be valuable for English because there's a correlation and there's, it's very revealing. So we've, we need to study this market and it'll reveal a lot of uh, uh, things a little bit sort of later on, if that makes sense. Makes sense. It makes, it makes sense, kind of. Here we go. All right, so the first set right here. Talk about it, my friends. All right, what we have here is the Strength Expansion Pack called Thunderclap Spark. This was released July 6th 2018 in Japan and it is the ninth Japanese subset released during the Sun and Moon era as it's called in Japan and the first considered as an enhancement of the seventh this is now see this gets it gets a little confusing here but it is the first to be considered as an enhancement of the seventh main expansion sky splitting charisma which in English is Sun and Moon celestial storm we got 73 cards in this in pack. this set yeah in the not set. in the pack in this in subset the set. sorry right. in this subset right that's another thing i notice about um about japanese sets is in many cases they're a lot smaller mm -hmm. than the english sets and you when you were talking to me about this uh, you were saying it's because oftentimes they even combine right right yes because like so there's no there's no there's no thunderclap spark like english equivalent right so this is just like a subset of Sky Splitting Charisma, which, like I said, is Sun and Moon, gotcha. Celestial Storm. But, uh, yeah. And the most valuable card, according to eBay, is the Custom Catcher. Currently, at the time of this stream. Currently, yes. Right. Custom Catcher Full Art, which sold for $42. Wow. Yeah. Well, hopefully we can we can grab that. So, all right. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up this pack. Yes. And hopefully, obviously, we're going after that chase card here. And you're you're gonna you're gonna notice a few differences right off the bat. And when you're opening it, just sort of explain to them. Back of the card, even mm -hmm. is a little bit different. Yes. Let's open this up, shall we? And we're gonna try and be delicate and and preserve this. But I have recently clipped my nails, so tough luck on that, I suppose. Man, I am not good at opening it. Here we go. Here we are. Ooh, nice. Nice rip. Oh, nope. I didn't do it. <laughs> there we are. Now we got it. Yeah, so right off the bat, we notice the back is different. That is not how it looks. I don't know. I don't know the trick for this one, Rob. Is there a trick? I think it's one card. <laughs> one card? To the front, put yeah. one to the front, and here we have the trainer. They do have some of it in English, actually. Like it says Pokemon on the back. I think it used to say Pocket Monster on the back of yep. the cards. Yep, that is true. Actually, I have some here. We have a Slugma. Now, I don't know the names of some of these Pokemon because I am a Gen 1, Gen 2 old school. Pokemon guy. So without their names on the top, I cannot identify them. <laughs> That's a stun fisk though, I can identify that. Yeah, here. So this is what they originally looked like, pocket yes. monsters. Yes, that's what I okay, so that's what yeah. I remember yep. from back in the day when I used to have some Japanese cards. They have changed it. I guess maybe they are are now taking on the Pokemon name as well in Japan. 
Uh, yeah, I guess so. Instead of pocket yep. monsters. All right, and those are the cards of this pack. This is my favorite. We didn't hit, but this is my favorite. Nice card. Nice card. Sweet. And there you go. So where's the pack? We'll just we'll keep them together. This way we can sort of show everyone. Maybe we can line them up here. They want to put this like on a. Yep. There you go. And then we can uh, talk about the next one. Talk about. Oh, let's get this one here. Here we have Strength Expansion Pack Fairy Rise. This one was released on August 3rd, 2018 in Japan. It is the 10th Japanese subset released during the Sun and Moon era and the second to be considered as an enhancement of the seventh main expansion, Sky Splitting Charisma, which again is the same as the last one, Sun and Moon Celestial Storm in English. This one contains 63 cards and focuses on fairy type Pokemon with a secondary focus on grass and psychic types. And the most valuable card at this time, mm -hmm. to uh, clarify, on eBay is the Netball Full Art, which sold for $59. Sweet. And we're, we're quoting raw prices, not, mm -hmm. not graded prices. Some, some of them will be graded as we go yeah. through, but, but obviously these the, are raw. The, uh, the graded prices of cards, mm -hmm. it makes the, the value inflate yes. a little bit. But in this case, we're talking about the raw value. Um, so indeed, I'll go ahead and open indeed. up this one. And because on on the front here we've got, in my opinion, the creepiest of all Pokemon, <laughs> Mimikyu. Mimikyu really creeps me. <laughs> this creeps is, listen, me out. Gives me bad dreams. I love Pokemon, but this is yet another attempt to cash in on the Pikachu fame. Every couple of years they'll release a new Pokemon that looks very similar to Pikachu, yeah. which is clearly a cash grab. But they can do what they want. That's right, Pokemon, because they're Pokemon. <laughs> All right, so we're going to open this. I'm going to do my best to not ruin this pack because I know you love the pack art. I do, I do. And um, as as we've mentioned before, you know, we're going to be doing lots of giveaways now. They're, they're related to milestones. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I'm sure a lot of people love pack cards. They collect them. And uh, or so this will be part of uh, maybe a, a giveaway. Oh, so, so I'll not be getting these packages. I'll I'll try to preserve <laughs> some of, some of these here. But again, um, the giveaway is going to be linked to us to subscribers. The next milestone is 100 subscribers. At the time of depends. Hopefully, like maybe years from now, and people will be like, wow, they 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 were actually focusing on just a hundred because now they're up to like hundreds of thousands. Who knows, right? <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, so this is. This particular fairy one rise. is the Fairy Rise Strength uh, Expansion Pack, SM7B. Uh, I'm going to do a little card trick. I think it's just the one. And I don't know all of these. See, yeah. I, see I, I, oh, I cheat and, and I read in You English, just but. reminded me to tell everyone, if you're trying to, if you get a Japanese pack and you don't know what it is, there is in this corner, sorry, Rob, to yep. cut in. As Rob just said, SM7B, if you look that up, online oh, let me try and focus it yeah in this case on the pack it's on the top yeah, right sm7b it's also on the cards is it yep it's also uh, on the cards you just look that up and it'll tell you what it is online exactly to identify it yep so we're going for the net ball full art we'll see um but nice cards as you can see the design of the frame of the cards like mm -hmm. the background of the frame they're different we uh, you know craig already noted the back of the cards are different. I actually like the back better in the Japanese versions. Overall, I like the Japanese versions of the cards better. I prefer the old school back of the, of the Japanese version. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice, nice. Even the artwork, I feel like they just... It's almost as though like they spend more time on the artwork. It's just, I think it's you the know? same artwork, though. Nice card right there. Again, this is the Fairy Rise set and that's it so not too shabby not too shabby at all all right so Moving next up next i'll shift here. these down yes now we got my boy lugia one of my favorite pokemon by the way right he's now. a great guy yeah um we have this is SM8, Pokemon Super Burst Impact. This is from 
It is the 18th main expansion of cards from the Sun and Moon era in Japan. It is based on Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. It was released September 7th, 2018. And then the English uh, expansion was released November 2nd, 2018. Again, these released in Japan first. Uh, Fun fact, with 236 cards, Lost Thunder, which is the English... Uh, becomes the largest English language set by some margin, which was uh, currently held by Aquapolis in 2003. Um, the Japanese equivalent has 111 cards. And of course, like our boy there, the Lugia GX Full Art is our valuable card we're looking here. On eBay, sold PSA 10 for $221. That is a good card. Good chase card. Yes. I, I um, it's a card that I'm actually looking to add to my collection. I haven't added it yet. Maybe we can get one here. But I love me a Lugia. So why yes, don't you do sir. the honors? Thank you. Again, now Craig is going to try to preserve the packs for everyone here, and we're going to be doing a, a giveaway again once we get to that first milestone. It's 100 subscribers, so we appreciate the love. If you can just subscribe to the show, get a few friends to do it as well. Smash that uh, that sort of notification bell, that like button, that's huge for us because it tells uh, YouTube the important stuff that we would need in order for them to show uh, this particular episode to more people. So that little action on your part really helps us out. We're trying to build an amazing community. So um, if you could do that for us, that would be awesome. And then what, whether you're watching this live or on the replay, hey, you know, grab the link and share it on your social media as well. I mean, every little bit of exposure helps here. So uh, Craig is meticulously. I did it. I like he's so it. carefully trying ah, to. Oh, uh, uh, oh, oh! Okay, he's we're good, got we're it. Good, we're good. He's got it. <laughs> All right, so show them up. Again, we're going after. This is the uh, currently. This is the Super Burst Impact Set, uh, Japanese SM8, and this came out in 2018. Scyther, nice card. I've never seen that card. Energy. Ooh, Ooh. You, love, you love Eevee. It's a nice Eevee That's card. a nice Eevee right there. And the final card. <gasps> oh. Ooh, nice. All right. So we got ourselves a nice holographic trainer nice. card. Nice card. That is nice. See, no, there's... there's uh, this design reminds me of like Magic the Gathering, actually. It does. It does. The way this one is. Wow, that's a, nice, a nice, that's a sleeve and leave. Yes. There we go. Nice little pull right there. So even the, even the holographics just looked better than the hollows that they put in the English versions. I like the added hollow of the, like that diamond on the bottom, mm -hmm. you know, it's nice. Very nice. You know, which is why, again, I, they're highly collectible. They're very, very cool. All right, so uh, next up in the line here of Japanese Pokemon uh, sets that we're going to be opening up, packs from eight different sets to show you guys various sets um, from Japan. Here we have SM9A, which is Night Unison. This was released on January 11th, 2019 in Japan. It is the 13th Japanese subset released during the Sun and Moon era and the first to be considered as an enhancement of the ninth main expansion, Tag Bolt. It contains 70 cards with a, with a focus on darkness and fairy type. And for this, we're looking for... Gray Ninja and Zorork GX Full Art, which sold for 27 bucks. Let's do it up. So even like uh, these, the packs, they remind me of the old school foil packs. Mm -hmm. um, they're, see, they're a little bit longer. Like, so if you take out, if you take out here, you know, the current packs, right? You can see already like the difference here, ready? So it's a little bit taller. The foil on the top is a lot longer. Definitely. You know what I mean? So even their their foil casings are are different. Yeah. Now this would be the English equivalent of uh, Sun and Moon Team Up. So that's why we're looking for that Grey Ninja and Zorork GX. 
I'm gonna. I'm this probably... is a set where it'd be like two Pokemon together. A very cool set. Tag team team ups team rather up, yeah. uh, are amazing. All right, here we go. I can I can just cheat and slide that one out here. All right, nice little illustration to start out with. I'm gonna start off strong here. Love the colors on these, right? Yeah. I mean, they're just Definitely. beautiful colors yeah, on these yeah. cards. I like the borders too. Nicer yep. borders and stuff. Exactly. Oh, this, this guy freaks me out. I love Lickitung. You do? Yeah. That is a new Pokemon. I'll leave it at that. And there you go. Wow, a Very 90s cool. phone. A 90s phone, yeah. What's this, pray tell? I don't know. Why don't you pray tell us? Tell. This is SM9B, which is the Strength Expansion Pack Full Metal Wall. This is the 14th Japanese subset released during the Sun and Moon Era and the second to be considered as an enhancement for the ninth main expansion, Tag Bolt, which again is the English equivalent of Sun and Moon Team Up. It has 69 cards with a particular focus on Metal Pokemon and Ultra Beasts. Now we're looking here as you love these, these uh, trainer cards, Green's Exploration, which sold for $149. Wow. You love the full art trainers. You know what that means. You know what that leads, <laughs> right? Isn't that your that's your it thing? Is. The full. Art I trainers. love full arts. I do have a collection of them. Let me I'm, not butcher I'm this. I'm a big fan. Um, my kids try to get into my full arts, but I, you know, full arts have really picked up an in interest over the past few months. Um, I feel like it was maybe not long ago, maybe only six, seven months ago, uh, full art trainers were not a target, weren't chase cards, right. and now people are recognizing them for what they are, which they're beautiful cards really well done and now they're highly collectible so i'm a big fan i have been a big fan since uh you know i started into this not right. not that long ago by the way but right. um i identified them right early on as a great card so yes if we can hit a full art trainer from this japanese pack i would be very very happy um i didn't like confession i didn't like full arts at all when i first got back into mm -hmm. pokemon again i'm an old school guy yeah so i got back into it Having been stuck in my ways mm -hmm. for years and not, uh, I'm butchering this back by the way. Yeah, no, it's fine. <laughs> and not understanding the new landscape of the Pokemon uh, TCG. Yeah. So I got in here with these full arts. I was like, ah, bring me back just a standard hollow. Is what that is right? this? What yeah. is this taking up the full the full page? Yeah, yeah. But I've grown to love them. Yeah, they're good cards. So again, I know you said this before. I just want to sort of. This was uh, butchered. <laughs> I tried. Uh, I just want to sort of mention this again, a big thing that we're, that right off the bat you have to notice about Japanese cards, and I don't want people to get fooled here, this is why I'm mentioning it again, is how many cards there are in the packs. Yes. In, these, in this case so far, it's been five cards per pack, so like, don't think like, oh, you go on eBay, whatever, and the packs are only, you know, several dollars, be like, oh, it's super cheap. I don't want you to get... Like, be surprised mm -hmm. when you get the pack and open up and think like, oh, it was tampered with. Um, that is how the Japanese cards sort of roll, um, which is for me, and I'm gonna. That's why I want to bring this up right now, is why I think it's a misconception that Japanese uh, cards overall are not worth as much. Right. I disagree. When you factor in the fa that there's only five cards per pack, and then you price out how many cards and the price of the packs in the English, you realize they're comparable, and in many cases, Japanese are actually more expensive, because right. you gotta factor how many cards you're getting. So there's just a rarity factor there, you know? And so, anyway, I just wanna point that out. You can open up those uh, those cards there, but always just keep in mind that most of the packs only have four or five cards. Yes. And right here we have Doug Trio. A beautiful wig. We have this guy, which not a fan. <laughs> we have Ekans. All right, that's a good card right there. Ekin. A sand shoe. I like that art. And a t I, this is Tango's Evolution, but I can't remember its name. But I actually had him in uh, Tangrowth. Tangrowth is his name. Nice card. Awesome. 
All right, so next up, and uh, we've got uh, a few more packs. Three left. Three left here. Of Again, we're opening up eight different Japanese uh, packs to show you guys variations here. And why don't you go ahead and tell us about this one. This is scroll up, please. This is... Okay, what we have here is SM10A, which is Strength Expansion Pack GG End. Let me focus that up. Which was released on April 5th, 2019 in Japan. It is the 15th Japanese subset released during the Sun and Moon era and the first to be considered as an enhancement of the 10th main expansion Double Blaze, which is the English equivalent of Sun and Moon Unbroken Bonds. It contains 69 cards and has a particular focus on fighting and dragon Pokemon. Now for this, according to eBay, at this at this current moment, the most valuable card we are looking for is the Giratina and Garchomp GX Full Art Secret Rare, which sold as a PSA 10 for 212 doll hairs. I like how you say Giratina. Thank you. Giratina. <laughs> It was uh, it was nice. Oh, Giratina. Okay. All right. They should make a movie out of that. Giratina. Yes. Uh, the secrets of Giratina. The secret of Giratina and Gertrude. Anyway, am I up? You are. You're, up. Oh, I'm up. Fantastic. Now, if I'm up, does that mean you're down? Um. I don't know. Inquiring minds will have to come to a conclusion on that. <laughs> I think that since I'm up, you naturally must be down. Or I'm a burr. More up. <laughs> is it possible for someone to be up, more upper? It is. If, if it's I me. am... But if I am up, isn't that assuming I am, up, I am above? No, because you're up, I'm upper. Then you'd have to be uppest. Wow. And then I'm upmost. Well, apparently I was just demoted. There you go. All right, so what, what's the chase card here? That we're, what's the card that we're going after? We're looking for the Giratina and Garchomp GX Full Art Secret Art. Rare. So we haven't pulled any full arts. We've pulled a, uh, a hollow here, but I, I would love to be able to pull a full art so we can sh you know, show everyone that what that would look like in the Japanese cards here. By the way, they've also made it like a paragraph to, to announce these cards. It used to be Holographic Charizard. Yeah. Now it's the GX Full Art Secret Rare. Yeah, it's, it's like going to Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see what we can pull here. Um, and again, this this is the uh, strength ex expansion pack, right? GG end mm -hmm. SM ten A Japanese, cool little card. Reminds me of Halloween. Yeah. <gasps> <gasps> it's a Pikachu. It is a Pikachu. My favorite Pokemon. I like that pull right there. I'm going to slob and lob that one just because I love Pikachu. Ooh, that's a nice one, too. And, oh. Okay. Ooh, a Kangaskhan. A, a nice little hollow pull right there. Yeah, Kangaskhan. We got two Raichus in the back. One is a, yeah. a Lolan, I believe. Yeah, so we're let's let's we're going to pop this in so you wow, guys can nice really card. see this card. That's a really nice card. Oof, look at that. Yeah. That looks, That's, that she's looks pretty. Great. She is pretty. That's a nice looking card right there. That's a really nice. I'm trying to stay as steady as possible. Wow, that is really nice. Well, you've had many venti I mean, Starbucks coffees yeah. today. So again, this is the Strength Expansion Pack GG at ends. This came out April of 2019, uh, a Japanese subset of Sun and Moon. Error. Era. Error. Error. Not, not, not error. Era. Error. Uh, that, that's going to be a slob in law for me. That is a nice card. Wonderful. A wonderful All right, what card. is next up, Gregory? Next up, robbery. We have here. Ooh, this is pretty. This one I'm going to try my best to not destroy. <laughs> what we have here is the SM10B Strength Expansion Pack Sky Legend. This was released on April 26, 2019 in Japan. It is the 16th Japanese subset released during the Sun and Moon era, as Rob would say. <laughs> and the second to be considered as an enhancement of the 10th main expansion, Double Blaze, which the English equivalent is Sun and Moon Unbroken Bonds. It has 69 cards and a with a particular focus on grass, water, and colorless types. 
Now, the set debuts the first tag team card that combines three Pokemon, which you see here on the front. It is the Legendary Birds, Articuno, Zapdos, and Moltres, which is also the card we're looking for because the Zapdos, Moltres, and Articuno GX Full Art at a PSA 10 sold for $333. That's a great card. Highly collectible. Yep. That's awesome. I'll put these right beautiful. over here. Look how beautiful they are. Let me not destroy this, please. This is such so a So nice Tag pack. Team um, is one of those packs over the past few months that have... This is Unbroken Bonds. Uh, unbroken Bonds. But Tag Team of Japanese is one of those sets that have like tripled in value over the past few, um, few months. Like Unbroken Bonds as well, but Tag Team more so. Let's let's get a nice little shot here of uh, of Craig There's attempting. The here we go. That that's Craig attempting to delicately open up a pack so that we don't destroy the pack art for all of you wonderful people. Because obviously we will be doing giveaways, leveraging this stuff here, giving them away. I did and, it. And so we're trying to preserve these. I did it. Great job. We're running out of room at this table here. <laughs> wonderful job, Craig. I think uh, everyone appreciates that you're looking out for them. Nice. Thanks, everyone. And me as well. Chabaka. As an abuck. You're hitting the cards with your arm. Oh, whoops. We got Mushroom Snowman. An Ekans card. I remember this card. Pacifically. A Noctowl. I like that. Whatever that is. And that was it. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. All right. So last up in uh, the Japanese packs that we're going to be featuring uh, for today's show is... SM11. Ooh, that's a pretty pack art. That this is, is Miracle Twin, also known as Unified Minds, the 11th. The 11th main expansion of cards from the Sun and Moon era. The second team continues to feature Generation... Rob? <laughs> what is Vite? I can't, I can't translate. I'm not good at Super Bowl translation. Seven. Seven. <laughs> v. <laughs> it's V-I-I. -I. Seven. You skipped that, that class, right? When you were <laughs> yep. in your Pokemon fourth G time I, repeating Listen, listen anything grade. with numbers, don't ask me. I okay. can't do it. Yeah. Okay, anyway, this card was re this pack was released May 31st, 2019. Now, what we are looking for here is Misty's Request Full Art, which at a PSA 10 sold for $300 here. It cost some powers. $300. Yes. This is Generation VII. V <laughs> Am I up? Oh, you're up. Sorry. Wow. I just opened it I on mean, you. He's, he's always sort of rushing his game right there. <laughs> Look at me. I'm in charge of everything. I'm upper. Yes. As I'm you like to say. No, I'm up most. Yes. You got the vocabulary of a mushroom. Yes. Mushrooms are incredibly smart plants. <laughs> Everybody knows that. All right. Let's see if we can end strong here with a nice, uh, another little hollow. Um, I, I, I love these Japanese cards. I really love opening up these packs. You know, the only downfall is, again, there's only a few cards per pack, but they're beautiful. And it just makes me want to open up even more. In the world is that? I have no idea. I thought that was Suda Wuda for a minute. It's the sword guy. Akuda Wuda? Suda Wuda. Wuda Kuda. Yeah. Onyx. Onyx. Nice card. Yep. A well illustrated card. A Brussels here. sprout. A Brussels sprout. <laughs> and last up, and we're ending with a nice little hollow. Nice. I uh, what no is clue that? what that guy is. He's, a, he's one of the new fellas. Wow. I don't know the new fellas. But in, look at how the hollow shines, though. I know, because you've got cards. the border around it. The border is so it's nice. It's very cool. It's like kind of makes you think it's like a full art. Right, you know? right. Really nice card. Still going to slav and love it. That's a slav and love. That would be a slav and lob. Gregory. 
Robbery. Sum up here. Um, what do you think uh, about all of the Japanese cards? I mean, I really like them. I like the design. I like the uh, border around it. <laughs> I like the border around it. Um, I like the back. And I would definitely invest in these. I have some at home. Yeah, they are, I, they are a, a better, more I think, more well put together card. Yeah, I I agree. I really dig the Japanese cards. Mm -hmm. I love the back of the card versus the back of the English cards. I think there's a little bit more design to it. Um, the front of the cards, whether it be the hollow or even the traditional common cards, um, I, I, the borders just make it a lot more special. They don't seem like common cards, yeah. you know. And 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 I know this may sound ridiculous. You know, I don't I don't read or, or can speak Japanese, but I, I love the language and I love the characters of the Japanese language and seeing them on the cards. For me, it's part of the design and I love it. I love how they look. Mm -hmm. um, but overall, whenever I have opened up a Japanese pack, I always have enjoyed it a lot more than opening up the uh, the English, uh, the, the Pokemon, Pokemon packs dedicated in English. Right. Um, because you're like close, you're closer to the source. It's the actual. Maybe that's what it is. Yeah, it's like the actual. Yes. Legit, like uh, obviously yeah. the English Pokemon is legitimate as well, but this is yeah. like, yeah, this is like what it was originally. I agree. I agree. Yeah. That's actually a really good point. So as far as recommendations for you know buy, sell, stay away from, because we're looking at like use use the term source. We're looking at the source, the mm -hmm. o the origins of Pokemon, and that's gonna make. Japanese cards hold value long term. So the rule of thumb, buy the best that you can afford. I would target the very best, the earliest um, Japanese cards. Now, modern cards are still beautiful. I like mm -hmm. they're they're coming out with some incredible stuff. Now, why I would recommend getting into the modern stuff is because it's going to be an indication on the value and the market in English. So. You always want to you want to know like well how do people determine price points for the English cards? Why are they being pre-sold, pre-ordered above retail? Well, because they're seeing how the cards are doing in Japan first, and that is an indication of how they're going to perform in the English markets. So this is why, as Pokemon collectors and investors, you have to have your finger on the pulse of what's going on with the Japanese card market, which is why we wanted to talk about it today, because there's a lot that we can learn here. There's a lot that we can learn about what we should collect from the Japanese cards, mm -hmm. but also a lot that we can learn from to tell us what's going to be valuable in the English market. Now, as far as some modern stuff to go after, you know, right now, this is really, really hot. And I'm not talking about that guy right yes, there. Yes, yes, I'm talking about um, this right here. Uh, this is the GX tag team this right here over the past few months have like tripled in value double triple in, val in value right around right around there and so it's highly co collectible japanese stuff is much harder to get obviously because they only release it in, in uh in japan right. so it's it's the the local distributors don't stock this stuff but when you can get your hands on it i say grab it something like this i would buy keep sealed mm-hmm You've heard me saying this a lot lately. I think sealed product over the next year will outperform the chase cards. So this is again one of those sets where if you buy it, keep it sealed like in a box like like this. And boxes like this, I think are great to enjoy. You know, they have increased in value, not at the same rate as the one that I just showed you. Right. But these boxes right here are I think are a buy and a open. You can enjoy them, which is uh, which is very, very, very cool. And obviously, there's a lot of other sets that you can go after. You know, if you like Vivid Voltage, they've got the set that came before that. I think it was called Volt, actually. Mm -hmm. You know, you like Shining Fates, they have that, you know. So so it's really, really cool what you can get with the Japanese sets. I My recommendation of the buy, sell, stay, stay away from, uh, my thing is buy. Absolutely, it's a buy. Um, these are great cards, and you, you said it best. You're, you're getting as close to the source as possible. Mm -hmm. You know, we did break out some some of the early first edition cards right here where you can see the backs do look different now, um, as you can see sort of here, right here. 
Um, this is uh, the early stuff. The, the, the design's different. The name is different than the newer stuff right here. Uh, but there's some really great things that you guys can find. Uh, but anyway, listen, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in to the Collector Showcase. As always, we appreciate those likes, those subscribes, and smashing the notification bell. That helps us out. And the more that you guys can do that, the more shows that we can create and do things like this. And we're going to be doing this every single Monday. We're going to be giving away a lot of stuff. And the next milestone is 100 subscribers. So you want to earn well, uh, something for free? You want us to do that giveaway? Whoa. Help us get to just 100 subscribers. We're close. And I have a feeling that if you just got all your family together, socially distanced, of, co of course, but all your family together, stole their phones, accessed yeah. YouTube, and subscribed, we could probably get it <laughs> just what you guys doing now. You started off nice with safe <laughs> social distance, and then you went into robbery. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's all about that stuff. Um, and uh, But yeah, I'm reading through the comments now. I also appreciate everyone who tuned in live. Uh, that's huge. If you guys can always take time out of your schedule to tune in live, I appreciate that. Everyone who did from Nick and Hey, it's Jay and Jesse and everyone. Really, really appreciate you guys. Love you guys. Stay safe. Um, as always, happy collecting. Gregory, anything else? Anything else? Well, Rob, I don't know if you know this, but... There are other platforms that they could follow us on as well. Why don't you let them know? Well, for example, we have uh, Facebook. We have Instagram. Wow. We have a Twitch where wow. we do a lot of our box breaks. And My gosh, you and, are multi-talented. Uh, yes. We have a Discord as well. Don't wow. We, don't we? Do, don't we Yo, Mike, well? we are also omnipresent, now, apparently. And, and isn't there a store that we also have? There's a store. TCScards.com. There's also another show. We have a brand new hire. He came on board about three weeks ago. Yes, yes. He's starting to. He's starting to no longer be a brand new hire. Yeah, that, oh, well, that's to, true. He's, starting to he's blend still a rookie. Right in. He's still a rookie. He's still. He's still. <laughs> absolutely. As I still break a, everything. I'm yeah. still a rookie too. <laughs> he's still a rookie. Yes. But go check out our other show as yes. well. Saturday morning card news. The great Chattanooga Flygazer, a wonderful hire and possibly new employee of the Pokemon Company. I don't know if you saw his illustration, but that I, was. I did see it. That was. I, I got to be honest, it was risky hiring. Like I was, not only was I on the verge of not hiring him, I was thinking about calling the police and maybe having him put in jail. That's how interesting the the, uh, the interview process went. And his resume was questionable at, yeah. you know, well. uh, but he's turned into be a, uh, a high performing individual and will probably be employee of the month. And he's just so darn cute. Yes. Anyway, go check that out. That's every Saturday morning for Saturday Card News. Yes. You can see us also on Twitch every Wednesday for a live break and every Monday right here on YouTube. We are the Collector Showcase. So Guys, happy collecting. Take care.